I'm making a spiced peach cobbler filling and a rum cake with real rum in it, combining the two and making a peach cobbler rum cake. And I'll show you just how I did it. So let's get right to it. I'm starting off by making my peach cobbler filling. I'm starting off with this step because I want to give the peach cobbler filling some time to cool off before I add it into the cake. So I'm starting off with 16 ounces of frozen peaches. Now you can use whichever type of peaches you want. You can use fresh, you can use frozen, you can use canned. It's going to be up to you. But the key is just to make sure that you soften them before you add them to your cake. So in addition to the 16 ounces of frozen peaches, I've got three quarters cup of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth teaspoon of nutmeg. So I'm just using a little bit of nutmeg, but that flavor goes a long way. So I'm going to mix them all together and I'm going to cook them over medium heat until you see it, there starts to become a syrup that forms and give it about five more minutes and they'll begin to soften up. And at this point, once they actually soften up, you can pierce them with a knife. That's when you know that they're ready. You can easily pierce them, cut the heat, set them to the side while we move on to making the cake. Making the cake is going to be really easy and for those who make pound cakes this is going to seem very familiar. It's going to be nearly identical to making a pound cake. So I'm starting off with three sticks of unsalted butter and to that I'm adding three cups of sugar. Now I'm going to mix the sugar and the butter together until they become creamy and fluffy and that's just going to take me about a minute or two until I get to that point. Now I know it looks like I'm mixing it on high speed, but that's just the editing. So just mix it on medium speed until you get it nice and fluffy, just a couple minutes. Now I'm adding my eggs, and I've got five eggs that I'm adding. I've added two already, so I'm just adding the remaining three. I wanna make sure that I am adding my eggs one at a time. If you don't do that, you add all the eggs at once, they can curdle, and you don't want that because you will then end up losing the air that you created through the creaming method. Adding the eggs one at a time creates an emulsification and gives the cake a better structure so it doesn't end up being flat. After I've got the eggs added and the batter smooth, I'm going to then start to add my dry ingredients. So I'm going to add three cups of flour and I'm going to add the flour in thirds. I'm starting off by adding one cup of flour. I'm using all purpose flour and not cake flour Cake flour is not going to be necessary for this recipe. All purpose flour is going to work just fine. I'm going to mix it over a low speed because I don't want the flour getting everywhere and mixing it on a higher speed may cause gluten to form and it may make it tougher. So in between adding the flour, I'm going to add in my liquids. I'm going to start with three quarters cups of whole milk that I'm going to divide in half. So I'm adding in that first half and once I've got that completely incorporated, then I'm going to add my second cup of all-purpose flour. And like I did before, I'm going to mix in the flour on low speed, making sure that I get all of it incorporated before I add in the rest of my liquids. And the rest of the liquids is going to be the remaining milk and the dark rum, which we haven't added yet. Now, I love that the base of this cake is a pound cake because I love pound cake. I love making it and I love eating it. And it tastes so good with this recipe. So the amount of rum that I just added was a quarter cup and I got one teaspoon of vanilla extract that I added. Now my last step before I move on to combining everything and making the peach cobbler rum pound cake is to add my last one cup of flour to make the three cups total. And I'm going to mix it together on low speed until everything gets completely combined and the batter is smooth. Now I also want to make sure that my oven is set to 325 degrees. I like to use 325 degrees when I don't need a dome top on the cake. It allows the cake to rise slower so that I don't get that dome and it ends up being flat. I'm going to be flipping this cake over later so I don't need a dome top. And you can see the batter is completely smooth and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. So I've got my cake pan. I've got a bunt cake pan and you can use a tube cake pan or any kind that you like. So I've got it greased and floured. You need to make sure that you do flour your pan. Don't just spray it or add grease to it. You need flour because when you try to turn it over, 
the cake might not come out. And a large part of that problem is because you didn't grease and flour the pan before you added your batter. Now you can add your peaches directly to the bottom of the pan. I like to add some batter first before adding the peaches. I think it tastes better that way, one, but also it keeps the peaches from separating from the batter as it bakes. So I like to do it this way versus doing it the other way where you got the peaches directly on the bottom of the pan. If you add your peaches directly to the bottom of the cake pan and you haven't properly greased and floured it, you're pretty much guaranteed to have the peaches stick to the bottom of the pan as you turn it out and not actually be a part of the cake. Doing it this way is a much safer bet and I think it tastes better because a lot of peach cobbler recipes are peaches mixed in with some sort of a cake batter or some other kind of a batter and it gives you a really familiar taste when it comes to peach cobbler. Now some peach cobblers have a pie crust and some have a cake batter. It depends on where you're from, what you're used to. I actually have a video that combines both the batter and a pie crust. You might want to check it out. But for your own sanity, so you don't end up getting mad when you're trying to turn out your cake and seeing a poor result, add the batter to the bottom of the pan instead of starting with the peaches and then add some peaches on top of that. So I'm not going to add all of the peaches. I'm going to save some of them for the top. And I want to make sure that I'm not adding in the juice either. I'm going to use that for my glaze. I often think of this idea when I'm baking that I think will be a major game changer. And I haven't seen it anywhere yet. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just haven't seen it or been able to find it anywhere. And that would be parchment cling. Just like plastic cling. You could put it in the bottom of your pan. And it will take the shape of whatever you're putting it in. And then you could put your batter, whatever it is, right on top of it bake it and it would automatically come out without any issues you wouldn't have any cake that would stick to the pan or wouldn't come out you would have a perfect result every single time because you would have that parchment cling in there now maybe that exists maybe it couldn't possibly exist i don't know but i think it would be a great idea what do you think if it doesn't exist yet maybe i need to figure out a way to create it after i've added the layer of peaches I'm then going to top it off with the rest of the cake batter. Adding the peaches between the layers is going to make this cake taste just like a peach cobbler with a twist and the twist coming from the rum. But the twist from the rum doesn't stop there. I've actually got a surprise for the next step. But first, I want to make sure that I'm getting all of the batter into this cake pan and then I'm going to bake it at 325 for about 50 to 60 minutes and it's really just going to depend on your cake pan and the oven that you have as far as how long it's actually going to take. You just want to make sure that you're checking it with the knife to see how far along it's come. And you can see this is what it looks like when it's done. Now it's time for the surprise twist that I told you about before, which is a rum soaking glaze. And to start this off, it's going to be one stick of butter that I'm going to melt down over medium heat. Then to that, I'm going to add one cup of sugar. And to help the sugar dissolve, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water. And after I've got those two things added to the butter, I'm going to cook this over medium heat for about two to three minutes. And what I'm really doing is I just want to make sure that the sugar gets dissolved before I move on to adding anything else to this mixture. An easy way for me to tell that the sugar is completely dissolved is when you see it look like this, when it starts to bubble up and gets foamy, that tells me that the sugar is probably completely dissolved. But also stir it up and just give it a look to see that the sugars have completely dissolved. At this point, I'm going to kill the heat before I add in my rum. And for the rum, I'm going to still use a dark rum and I'm adding in one half cup. For a light rum, you could probably use it for this recipe. I don't know how it would turn out because I haven't tried it, but if that's what you want to use, you can. I'm sure it will work out just fine. And I'm also adding in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now my cake has been cooling for about 10 minutes and I don't want to let it cool for too long. So I'm going to go ahead and get this poured right over the top of my cake. Now I want to make sure that I pour this slowly because as you can see, Looking at the top of the cake, there's not a lot of room. So if I pour this quickly, it could spill over and I don't want this all over my countertop. I want it inside of the cake. 
it's going to take about 10 minutes for the cake to fully absorb this glaze and I want to make sure that it is fully absorbed before I try to turn it out but I also don't want to wait for a long time before I turn out my cake because I don't want to risk the chance of the cake becoming too soft and sticking to the sides so I'll wait for this to absorb the liquid for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to get ready to turn it out now turning it out is always one of the more nervous things about cake making to me because you could go through this whole process perfectly and then the cake could still end up sticking to the pan so I'm taking my time here and you can see it came out perfectly the spots that you see on the outside are the peaches it's mostly the peach juice that got a little caramelized the inside is not that way at all it tastes perfectly fine and delicious on the inside I've transferred the cake to a wire rack because I'm going to end up adding a glaze but first I'm topping it off with the remainder of the peaches that I cooked. Now you might ask why not add all of those peaches to the batter because that would have been good right? Well there's going to be an issue with doing that because adding all of those peaches to the inside could have made it very difficult to get the cake out of the pan because it would have generated a lot of juice which would have become very sticky just think of yourself as making a peach cobbler or a peach pie when you boil all those juices it's going to become very thick and very sticky and all that stuff would have seeped out to the edges of the pan and it would have been nearly impossible to get it all out plus the peaches on the outside actually have a different flavor profile from the peaches that got baked in with the cake and it provides a really nice contrast that tastes amazing together. It's probably why a lot of people put the peaches on top of the cake in the first place when they're making these peach cobbler pound cakes. Ready to top the cake off with the glaze. It's almost done at this point. So I've got two cups of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of dark rum that I'm adding to it. But I'm also going to use some of the peach juice that I told you I was going to set aside for the glaze. So I'm using about four to six tablespoons and I'm just going to add a few tablespoons at a time just so I can see how much I'll actually need. But this is thicker than you would have with lemon juice or water or milk or some other liquid that you're going to use. The peach cobbler syrup is a little thick. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting the right amount that I'm going to need for this. And I want a thicker glaze and not a thinner one. So I'm going to use the least amount that I have to use. So I'm starting off with probably three to four tablespoons and then I'll add a tablespoon each time until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. This glaze is going to combine the flavors of the peach cobbler syrup and the rum so you're going to get all those flavors of the cake right into this glaze. Now before you pour the glaze over the cake make sure that the cake is completely cooled first. Now like I said I like a thicker glaze so you're going to see this dry thicker but you can also go with the thinner glaze if that's what you prefer by adding more liquid to it. But if your cake is hot, the glaze might actually seep right into the cake and it'll thin out. It'll melt that sugar. So you want to make sure that your cake is completely cooled before you move on to doing this step. I always make sure that I'm using a wire rack when I'm glazing a cake because I don't like to see glaze pulled at the bottom of the cake or at the base of the cake. I want to make sure that it gets to where it needs to go and that's all that I'm going to need. I don't want any of the extra surrounding the cake or at the bottom of it either. You may not even realize it, but you got rum three different ways in this cake. You got it in the batter, you got it in the soaking glaze, and you got it right on top with this glaze. If you want to make just the rum cake, you want to check out this video that I have for it. The recipe is amazing and is actually different than this one. So you want to check it out and see what the differences are. The glazes had a chance to set, so I'm going to cut into this cake and let you see just how good it looks from the inside and the outside. So you'll see on the inside of this cake where the peaches are and why I said that this is going to be a better way of making it than just putting the peaches on the bottom of the pan. This cake really does taste like peach cobbler and rum cake married each other and had a baby. It is absolutely delicious. I want you to give it a try and leave a comment and tell me what you think. It is absolutely amazing.